one of the key themes here with Siemens Gas and Power is making digitalization happen. And I'm here with Ziad. Ziad, what does digitalization mean? What does it mean for you guys in, in Siemens Gas and Power? Well, I'm happy that you're asking me this question today. Uh, two years ago, I think my uh, definition of digitalization would have been completely different. Uh, but today, uh, being two years actively in the market to uh, get digital products to power producers and oil and gas customers, uh, we see that there is a sort of understanding of what customers are expecting. Okay. So, um, uh, if we can split that into three levels, uh, one level would be focusing on short midterm. I would just give an example. That would be, for example, a maintenance manager or okay. an operations manager yep. who's more focused on optimizing the current way of operating plants. So, so what's there and then so what's there? Optimizers. Opt optimizers. For example, mainly a maintenance manager would focus on five things. Right. right? So it's it's uh, power, increasing his power capacity, uh, reducing the fuel consumption, yeah, so increasing more the efficiency. efficiency. Exactly. Emissions is becoming more and more of a topic. Reliability and availability. There should be no shutdown, whatever, whatsoever. This needs to be a reliable operation. And fifth, and one of the key things is cost reduction. So maintenance cost reduction. So if, if, if we talk to maintenance managers, they would be interested in digital products that can create these five values. They are less um, interested in having a platform which is maybe from an IT perspective, uh, very fancy. It's, but got, it's got all the shiny toys and the shiny balls, but it, it's like, well, show me the value. Ex uh, exactly. So it's more on the value level. Taking it to the next level, if we are talking to a CEO of a company, yeah. I think uh, those guys are very much challenged at the moment to keep their organization profitable on the long term. So it's five to ten years that they are looking at. And this is where we start looking into the topic of new business models. Okay. So how can I now change the way how I'm operating my organization and how can I make my organization profitable with, some, with something which is maybe completely disruptive? Let's okay. think about at the moment there are multiple challenges that are coming in the market, right? Uh, we see if we're uh, talking about traditional power utilities, yep. the renewables are coming in, right? How can I stay... Prosumers at the end, depending on what country you're in, whatever. Right? That's correct, that's correct. So the shift of the way how the managers, the maintenance managers, the CEOs were reporting, were uh, operating this business is different than what, what, what could be done with digitalization. Right, and I think uh, this is where we try to focus. So we try to focus at the moment on things that are tangible. Yep. Right, and we try to do it also with our customers together. And you, we were chatting earlier this morning, and you mentioned that doing it together with your your customers is about co-innovation, co-development. It, it's not just here's a new here's a new shiny product. Right. Buy one. They buy it and you go see it and you're gone. Right. So you have a different model here, right? Right. It's it's what we call co-creation. Co-creation. Right? Co-creation. And co-creation does not require every time to start everything from scratch. Right? Okay. A couple of things are maybe sometimes available in, True. in, in what we have. It's just linking things together and creating a solution which helps or creating a solution where we can tackle not only one issue but multiple issues. Just to give you an example how such a co-creation happens, actually we started with what we call a discovery session. So we sit okay. with our customer together and we start working, uh, looking into their business model. We start talking to the maintenance manager, we talk to the operations manager, right. and we start looking into their challenges. So what keeps them up at night, night. right? That's, that's how we start looking into uh, different work streams, right? That we see how far can we prioritize the one or the other which can tackle problems, issues that they see today. Okay. And we shift the others to a later stage. And this is the way okay, how the, we did it. Okay, besides trying to go to Nirvana, 
straight away and fix all the problems tomorrow morning. It's right. not going to happen. Right, because because as, as you know, one of the things that we see now in creating such solutions, it has to be fast. So well, I need it. I, yeah, I need to fix this problem we need, yesterday. We need to fix the problem yesterday. And then the second thing is it takes anyhow iteration process, right? So it's not always the first idea is the idea which will the bring one. us to the to the to the best best solution or to the winning factor. So um, what we did is we did with one of our customers in the Middle East. Uh, we were uh, looking, those guys are very much at the moment uh, looking into sus the sustainability of power. So um, multiple plants uh, are were built in the beginning of the 90s, right? Okay. And 30 years ago. 30 years ago, and it's just a technology where there is a degradation that happens ah, in the okay. turbines, okay. right? And so they become less efficient or whatever? Correct, so you start consuming more fuel. To get the same amount of power or less power. To get the same amount of power or less power. Also emissions, now the focus on ah, okay. emissions here in the countries is increasing. So uh, there are certain emission limitations that need to be maintained. So we, we started talking to one of the customers and then he gave us a challenge. So he said, like, I'm looking into the degradation and there is an idea. Could you guys look at it and could you verify if it makes sense to develop a product? Okay. So, and we started with our engineers in, uh, in Germany looking into the operation of the plants, right? Okay. Assessing so this, is the, this is the entire plant. This is the entire plant, whereas we started actually first with the main heart of the plant, which the is the gas turbine. The gas turbine. Okay. Gas turbine is where the fuel consumption is. So, oh, yeah, well, it's, 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 it's the heart of the thing, right? the so. heart of the power. So, we started looking there and we started assessing how much is that degradation. That was step one. Step two was if there is a degradation, is it a reoccurring or is it a one time effect which I can handle manually? Okay. And number three was on top of the degradation, if I use something like AI. Which insights do I have to optimize beyond only the degradation? So I start getting into the predictive maintenance of the, of what's going to happen next if I don't do something. Predictive or what we managed to get is also uh, look into reducing the degradation, uh, lowering the NOx emissions, ah, okay. and getting the units more stable. Which are th things that keep the operations manager awake at night. Correct. And, and they're, they're his KPIs. His KPIs, absolutely. And with, with that, we, we managed to get a, a, a product in. So the question was now if the product uh, is in, it's an automatic optimization of the gas turbine that happens. Okay. Right? And uh, this is how we came and developed a product which maybe two years ago we didn't think about it's the requirement in the market for that product. And, and, and the physical implementation of that product, so you're you're putting sensors onto various parts of the plant machinery, the turbine, whatever, you're gathering that data, you're putting it in a cloud or a data data center somewhere and then you're writing the algorithms that go off and process all that. Right, that's all the infrastructure that is surrounding a digital solution. Uh, however, the nice thing about power plants is we've been monitoring these turbines since years, so it's nothing new you, you to his, monitor them. You have historic data you can go back on as well. Correct, so we do have the historic data and it's not a question of putting the sensors on the turbines because the sensors are already available. So the question is more about now connecting the plants and analyzing the data with a speed which allows us to evaluate as much data as, as needed required to come with the solution. So, and we have to develop also with that uh, two different uh, solutions. One solution is what we call a cloud-based solution. Okay. So this is for countries which are open to using cloud technologies. Uh, correct, and it varies across the world. It varies across the world. And then other solutions which are more on an on-premise solution. Traditional, it's in my data center, it's in my network. Right, and with the, the on-premise solution, I think what we do is we gather the data, we take the data in certain batches, in certain intervals, uh, time intervals, okay. and instead of the uh, automation being done automatically, uh, 
um, uh, and an update of the AI module, right? This is done on premise. Ah, okay. So it's a way uh, around it. Uh, the thing is, I think uh, we're working here with uh, critical infrastructure when it comes to oil and gas and power utility, and you know the regulations. Yeah, I, I may not, I may not all put that in the public cloud in the morning, Correct. and my SCADA system with my end. I know it's a different channel. Oh wow, okay. But as you say, you're you're coming at digitalization. It's not just about the. I live in the technology world, yes. and, and technology is wonderful, but. Uh, one of any one of these energy companies could purchase all the best technology, the latest and greatest, all the gadgets, all the whistles and bells, and it still not, may not bring them any value because if they don't know how to use it, how to implement it, if it doesn't fix a problem they have, it's digitalization is adding value. Right, and uh, uh, it's always the first question that comes up always is what's the ROI? That's the world we live in. Come here, thank you very much. Most welcome. Thank you. Thank you.